Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pops and Drops podcast. In this week's episode, I have Enchantress uh, located in Las Vegas. How's it going? Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm really excited to have you on. Um, so just going to kind of dive in. I uh, want to know a little bit about you. So when when did you first start in the music industry? So I've started professionally at 16 years old, but I've been singing longer than I can remember. I loved uh, singing karaoke when I was little and I would always have my mom like drive me every weekend. But yeah, uh, started since 16. That's awesome. I love karaoke. Well, I used <laughs> I lived in L.A. for like 10 years and there was this uh, karaoke bar that was within walking distance of my apartment. And I there was one week where I went there every single night. Um, yeah, my wallet didn't like that that much, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I listened to not alone. It's in, it's beautiful. It's haunting. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how does your whole, uh, creative process start when you start, uh, writing or recording? So I'm very, I'm very private in my writing. So I'll have to like completely lock myself up and be completely alone. Like if I'm around anybody, I can't do it. So like, I, that's why like I'm having a studio built in my closet in my room. So I have like that privacy and everything. But yeah, I have to be alone. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I've got two kids who are constantly coming in here when I'm starting to record and I drives me a little bit crazy sometimes but <laughs> i definitely understand the needing for isolation when you're oh, create, yeah. when you're creating um so i read a little bit of your bio um and it said that you're inspired by like lady gaga uh who mm -hmm. else in the industry really influences you well when i was growing up i really liked this band called the pretty reckless i don't know if you've seen uh how the grinch stole christmas cindy lou she's a rock star now yeah <laughs> uh, but i love her style i love like the very raspy tone to her voice i'm actually about to start doing a rock project so her inspiration is going to come out a little bit more with that that's awesome so what about what about rock did the like do you identify with <laughs> the aggression sometimes i'm not <laughs> even to you um but i mean i just always connected with it i connected with rock stuff before i did with pop you know yeah, yeah. I, i'm i'm kind of the same way my parents i grew up on acdc and mm -hmm. kiss, kiss one of my first concerts i think i think it may have been my first concert was kiss um but yeah AC, my parents were always blasting acdc and that's more like, uh, what is that? Air, hair metal. Mm, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm I, I was born in '88, so I'm a little bit of an '80s baby. I'm more of a '90s kid though. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I definitely identify with rock as well. Um, so have you been? How long have you been uh, performing? I've been performing for about four years now. Yeah, four years now. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been awesome. I love performing so much. <laughs> Anything uh, crazy happen at any of your shows? Uh, not not necessarily. I don't. I wouldn't say I've done enough shows for something crazy to happen. Yeah. Uh, I go crazy at shows. <laughs> <I've done that. laughs> nice. Have you ever? Do you ever go to? Uh, have has anything ever crazy happened at a like a show you've been to? Um, I've seen several fights and I mean, I crowd surf all the time. So nice. like, I'm usually the crazy one in the bunch. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. cool. Um, so being in the industry, have you, is there any sort of like hurdles that you've had to face? Yeah, definitely. Having to market myself. I am not keen on that. Um, yeah. I'm actually learning it, like learning from my, my music buddies and trying to like learn my way through it yeah, yeah mar marketing is one of the hardest things to do as an artist oh yeah definitely <laughs> yeah there's a lot of I mean especially now because there's so much out there 
it's, exactly. it's really hard to like carve out your name. So it, it's almost like everybody, you have to be, everyone needs a team, but it's, it's kind of hard to form a team when, when you have to be the one doing, I mean, I have to be the one doing everything. It's just, just like you, it's all, you know, it's, it's rough. It's, it's tough out there, but um, you have a really amazing voice. So I know that you're going to do big things. So hopefully, hopefully the team kind of forms around you. Um, so other than marketing, is it just marketing? That's kind of the roughest thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing and writing sometimes like it, it takes me a little bit longer than others to write lyrics specifically, but like I've been getting better at it. The more I do it, the more better I get. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Um, so you've been doing this since you were 16 or 17, you said? 16, yeah. 16. <laughs> um, did you, what, have your goals changed or what, what's your, what's your biggest like long-term goal now? Well, when I was younger, like around 16, my biggest goal was to play the Madison Square Garden. Oh, nice. Um but now <laughs> it's a different venue. I would absolutely love to play at the Sphere in Las Vegas. That is some of the most high tech shit ever. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks so cool. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a bunch of videos of that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's a good goal. That I'm I'm adding that to my goal list. That is that would be so sick. Just the visuals. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You can make that entire place just about you and like your art and stuff. Oh my gosh, I would love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'll happen. You put it out there, it'll happen. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you so is that where where do you kind of like see yourself in 10 years then? Is 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 that like your pinnacle? You think in 10 years you'll be able to shut down that the sphere? I would love for that to happen. Um, I just where I see myself in 10 years, I would like to be successful for first off, like financially successful and people hearing my music and understanding the words to my music and, and the meanings behind it. I want to like speak to people. So yeah. I want, I want to raise that, that bar with that. So what about a, being a, being a fan? Have, what are, what are some of the, your favorite concerts or festivals you've been to? Well, I mean, because she's my favorite, I got to say Lady Gaga, but her most recent tour, the Chromatica Ball that she just had, yeah. amazing, absolutely amazing. That's awesome. She is pretty badass. I yeah. I went to college in Chicago, and I saw her went before she was Lady Gaga at House of Blues. Really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was just her and a piano. It was so, it was so awesome. I mean... I didn't know. I mean, nobody knew back then, but I do. I do remember being like, "Whoa, she she sounds awesome." Back, I, I forgot what her real name is, but she went by. Mm -hmm. She went by her real name back then. Yeah, um, Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's cool. Yeah, Lady Gaga is very badass. Lucky. She, yeah, I love I love her art, like the how she tells a story in her concerts. That's where I take a lot of my inspiration from is the storytelling part. Yeah. So is she the number one on your like collaboration bucket list or is there anybody else you really want to work with? I mean, she's definitely a number one, but I mean, I would love to work with artists like uh, Lil Nas X. Everybody knows who that is. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sullivan King, he does EDM rock stuff. Um, yeah. And then a rapper, her name's Queen Herbie. She's awesome. Uh, she's one a uh, smaller artist, I believe. But I would yeah. love to work with her, yeah. Nice. I really want to work with Sullivan King. I've seen him at Base Canyon like three times. <laughs> he's so he's so sick. Yeah, so and he's cool. her too. He seems yeah. like cool. yeah. He just had a baby. Him and I his uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. He's 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 really awesome. Um, when I when we this Base Canyon this last year, he was doing a like a merch signing thing with Scummy Bears, and mm -hmm. there was a there was a long line. And me and my girl were just standing outside of Scummy Bears and we locked eyes and he like gave me like a head nod. And I was like, what's up, bro? So <laughs> that's cool. I, I hope I hope the one to collab with him, too. He's he's very yeah. badass. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk about 
uh, Not Alone. We're going to be featuring that at the end of this episode. What was the what was the inspiration for that one? Well, back when uh, I was growing up, you know, like I never really like fit in like that. Like I was very much like an emo kid. I still am. But, you know, <laughs> like growing up as a kid, that's not as like it, it wasn't as accepted back then as it is now, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I just felt very, very alone. And like I never really had something like, you know make it better so I like wrote a song about it and like it is the one song that has spoken to many many people that I've shown it to it is a lot of people's favorites yeah it's really good it's 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 beautiful yeah. so thank you yeah I just don't want people to feel like how I used to feel you know like nobody is alone in this world there's always that one person yeah and everyone everyone's felt that way I got picked on a lot in middle school and high school like to the point where I was suicidal and having 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 music like that you've created out there now I think it's probably having that people can identify with and not feel so alone so that's awesome um cool well we're going to play that in a minute um but before we go I would like to end every interview by finding out a uh, few things that you're grateful for, and on a high note. So, what what are uh, three or four things in your life that you're most grateful for? I'm grateful for my family. Like even through thick and thin, when times get tough and everything, they're still my drive and inspiration. They motivate me and encourage me to be the best. And I'm also grateful, to, of course, have mu- music as an outlet because you know music is a universal language that everybody understands and can feel. And all the people in my, like my friends, my supporters, you know, I'm especially grateful for all of them. I wouldn't be, you know, literally where I am today without them. So it's really cool. Awesome. All right. Well, before we go, let everybody know where they can find all your stuff. My name is Enchantress, N-C-H-A-N-T-R-E-Z. Very specific spelling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you <laughs> Find me on uh, Instagram, Spotify, all the major platforms, and I will be releasing some new music soon, so keep an ear out for that, and I'm very excited about it. (laughs) Uh, Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on, and here is Not Alone.
to begin I know it's gonna get better